Hey everybody and welcome back to some more Project Ozone Light. Last episode, we left off having made ourselves a cobblestone generator and then upgrading it to a tier 2 cobblestone generator, which is currently outputting, uh, I believe, one cobblestone every 10 ticks, so two cobblestone per second, and putting it into our basic storage drawer above it. And right now we have got the full 2048 cobblestone, uh, aka 64 stacks, or maybe 32 stacks. I might have been wrong in the last episode now that I think about it. It might be... 32 stacks by default, but we do have the maximum amount that you can store inside of our storage drawer because as you can see, uh, the number is not going up any higher. And if I take one or two out of here, uh, it does quickly replenish and fill back up to 2048. And speaking of things that I got wrong in the last episode, uh, it turns out that you can actually hammer down compressed cobblestone, compressed gravel, and compressed sand into gravel, sand, and dust, respectively. Now, there's no compressed dust for whatever reason, uh, which is why we've got over a 1,000 dust in this storage drawer, uh, as opposed to uh, about 100 compressed gravel and compressed sand in the other two storage drawers, uh, but it makes life so much easier. So uh, all we need to do now is grab some of our stone from our uh, basic storage drawer over here, craft it up into compressed stone like so, and then if we throw it down, when we break it, it with the hammer, uh, we just get a compressed piece of gravel, which is really neat. Uh, in some older versions of Project Ozone, uh, you used to have to make a compressed hammer, and then when you broke it, you would get like nine pieces of gravel that you would then have to craft again if you wanted to hammer that down into sand, but it makes it real easy, so we can put the gravel down like so, hammer it down again, and just like before, we then get seven uh, compressed sand, and then with the last one, like I say, it's a bit weird. I'm not quite sure why there isn't a compressed dust in the pack, but when you break that, you get a bunch of dust, which uh, is fine nonetheless. It's not really a problem because we don't have to hammer the dust uh, into anything after that. Uh, so what I would like to work on in today's episode is, first of all, uh, we've got a couple of quests to uh, claim that we didn't claim at the end of the last episode. Those are the quests for the Crucible and then the two cobblestone generators. Uh, again, as always, hopefully we get some cool stuff and more importantly, uh, some useful stuff out of these loot chests here. We've got an Invar Hammer, we've got a Guardian Charm, that's another one to add to the collection, uh, and a Slime Charm. How many charms do we have at this point? We've got um, a Guardian Charm, a Slime Charm, a Zombie Charm, a Cave Spider Charm, and a Gas Charm. I wonder how many of those charms uh, there are in the pack. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15? 15 charms? We're already a third of the way there. We've only got 10 more charms to collect. We will have that collection, hopefully, in no time. So... Uh, what I want to work on in today's episode is hopefully getting to the point where we have a somewhat semi-automated sifting system because what we have to do now in order to get all of our items is grab a bunch of gravel sand or dust take it over to our sieve here and basically just stand holding down the right click button until we get a bunch of sifted stuff which we could of course then use uh, to craft up other items but i would like to automate this process uh, so that i don't have to cut away quite as much and i don't have to spend quite as much time on video just standing here and just right clicking on the, the sips because it's not particularly the most interesting thing in the world to watch. Now to do this, uh, we are going to need to get ourselves, I believe, a mechanical user. Uh, there are no auto sieves in this pack. If I type in sieve, the only sieve that you can get is the one from Ex Nihilo that we have right now. You could, of course, change the mesh that's inside of it, but as far as I know, no automatic sieve or anything like that. Uh, but what we can do is we can get a mechanical user from X Utilities 2, which, if we place down uh, on the top here, will essentially act as a player, me, uh, right-clicking onto that center uh, sieve there and hopefully putting in uh, the sand, the gravel, or the dust into all of the other slots and then just kind of spewing it out all over the place of course once it does that we are then going to have to either stand next to it to pick up all the stuff which kind of defeats the whole point of automating it because we still have to be there um or we can set up something like a vacuum chest or a vacuum hopper or something along those lines uh, to go ahead and pick up all of the stuff um i quite like the look here of the absorption hopper this guy vacuums up items and xp orbs in a seven by seven by seven area which i believe is slightly larger than the default on the vacuum chest um, and also the vacuum chest requires a diamond which the absorption hopper does not it just requires three obsidian, one normal hopper, and then one eye of ender, uh, which does take me to a, a good starting point, I think, for today's episode, uh, because it is the next quest in the quest book here, and that is to the nether. To do this, of course, we have to build a nether portal, and to do that, we need 10 pieces of obsidian. Thankfully, obsidian in this pack is pretty easy to get. All we have to do is make ourselves a stone barrel, much like the wooden barrels that we made in the last episode. It just requires a stone slab, which we can make using that stone 
that we got in the last episode like so, and then six cobblestone, three on either side like this, and that should get us our first stone barrel. Or do we need normal stone? We need normal stone. Okay, let me quickly get rid of those and replace those with normal stone like so. And once we've got this, all we have to do is place it down. Now, the way that this works is we put lava into the stone barrel. I'm not prepared, as you can see, because we do not have any lava uh, in our crucible right now. We should probably get a little bit more cooking up. And it might have been a bit of a mistake in the last episode to kind of jump the gun a little bit and use our one bucket of lava to make a cobblestone generator, uh, because it would almost certainly have been a better idea to use that lava to increase the speed at which we can then make more lava uh, going forward in the future. But essentially, the way that this works is we take a bucket of lava, we put the lava into the stone barrel, and then you put a bucket of water on top of that stone barrel, and it will turn the lava inside uh, into obsidian, much like it would do if you put water over lava in the world. The water kind of just flows over it, and the lava turns into obsidian. Uh, but just in this case, because it's in the barrel, we can then right-click to pop the obsidian out, or we can hopper it out or pipe it out or anything like that, uh, just making it a bit easier. It means we don't have to have a diamond pickaxe, uh, which, again, just makes life a little bit simpler. Uh, so whilst we're waiting for this to complete, because again, just like last episode, it is going to take a little bit of time for that to finish. Um, I would like to work on this quest down here, storage control, which we did talk about a bit in the last episode, uh, but we didn't actually get around to doing because we didn't have uh, iron when we talked about it. But we do now, of course, have some iron. And so uh, what we can go ahead and do is just very quickly uh, craft all of this up like so. And one of the main reasons why I would like to get uh, into this quest line, let me quickly grab a little bit of wood here for fuel, is because we can use it to all automate the crafting of these chunks here, which are going to be really useful in just the whole automation process of automating the sifting and then automating, turning the sifting products that we get into things like iron ingots. Now, I think if I am not mistaken, these drawers do require a piston or at least a controller does. I'm not quite sure if the uh, compacting draw does. Let's have a look. The draw controller requires a diamond, two redstone comparators, five stone, and then a normal storage draw. So that one doesn't require any pistons. Maybe it's the compacting draw uh, that requires pistons. Yeah, it requires two pistons here. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to get redstone for the piston, we do first have to upgrade our meshes uh, to an iron mesh. We do. And to get this iron stiffened mesh, we have to, again, just like before, uh, take the previous tier of mesh, in this case, the flint stiffened mesh, and then craft it up with six of the new material, in this scenario, iron, uh, to create the new tier of mesh. So, uh, do we have six iron lying around? We do indeed. Let me quickly grab one of these. It's going to be, of course, a little bit slower here because we don't have the ability to use the full... Uh, 25 sieves that we've got, but uh, it does allow us to get a few extra items like that redstone uh, that we are going to need for our piston. And so let's go ahead and craft that up like that. Throw it back down over here. And guys, what I am going to do after we quickly uh, grab a reward here, which is this guy claim reward. What do we get? We got 64 nether stars. Excuse me? What? Oh, they're fake. On close inspection, the nether star is a fake made out of enchanted cardboard. Hope you have a receipt. Oh, oh, there's no, it's useless. It's completely useless. There's no recipe for it. There's no uses for it. Oh, I got so excited for a second there. That would, that would have been ridiculous if we'd have got 64 nether stars. It does seem to have an EMC of 139,000, at least when it's in a chest. As soon as I bring it down into my inventory or into my hot bar, it then changes. Maybe we might be able to get that EMC out of it later on down the line if we get into Project E, maybe we can put those in and it might trick it into giving us 139,000 EMC per nether star, possibly. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but guys, what I'm going to do here real quick, I'm going to go away. I'm going to uh, sieve a bunch of sand, gravel, and dust. Uh, once I've done that, I'll probably use some of the iron that we get uh, to upgrade a few more of these meshes here so we can start doing it faster and faster as we go. And I'm also going to wait until the Crucible has, of course, finished and got us our piece of lava. Um, actually, speaking of that, we do, of course, need eight buckets of lava in order to get this up and running and so what i will probably do is take the first bit of lava put it underneath and then once i've got all 10 buckets of lava to make the obsidian i'll come back and we'll build ourselves the nether portal and a little bit of sifting later and i've upgraded eight more of our meshes here to iron stiffened meshes and i've sifted a couple of stacks maybe like 10 or 12 uh, of dust and we've got a bunch of stuff most importantly though we've got over a stack of redstone and so what we should be able to do now is go ahead and start making the required items to complete the storage control quest but before we do that uh, you may notice that i do not have 10 pieces of obsidian in my inventory um, and we've only got one bucket worth of lava in the crucible and that is 
is because instead of doing it all off camera, I thought we'd go ahead and automate this a little bit because I'm a big fan of automating stuff in modern Minecraft. And so I figured why not? Also, uh, it saves me having to do a little bit of off camera grinding. And so uh, what I plan to do here is to quickly go ahead and make myself a hopper, which we can then use to funnel cobblestone into the crucible because you can't put more than four cobblestone into the crucible at any given time. But what you can do is put stacks of cobblestone into a hopper, which will then automatically feed that cobblestone across into the crucible. And then all we have to do from there is take that lava and store it somewhere. Now we could automatically pump it over into the stone barrel. And actually, you know what? That might work. Originally, what I was going to do is I was going to make a tank for mechanism uh, and then store all the lava in there and then eventually move it over into the stone barrel but i think what is going to be a little bit more interesting and a little bit more automated is making a fluid duct here from thermal expansion real quick which again if memory serves me right is just two copper and then one lead i believe to make an opaque fluid duct i will quickly check this while that smelts up uh yes it does require two copper ingots and then one lead ingot we could possibly go with ender io fluid ducts but uh, those do require conduit binder which is just a little bit more uh, effort to make at this point in the game and the fluid duct uh, it should be fine um, I don't think the fluid ducts are quite as fast. They don't move as much liquid as the uh, fluid conduits do from Ender IO, but uh, we're not moving that much lava. It's only producing a couple of millibuckets every second, and so we should be fine for the time being with this. So now we've got eight lead, which is more than enough. We need to quickly smelt up two copper ingots. And once we have both of those, let's go ahead and do something like this and like this. And then finally, in order to actually activate uh, the fluid duct here, we need to get ourselves a server. And I remember I am a complete fool because you can't do this. Um, I completely forgot. You cannot move lava with normal fluid ducts in the newer versions of thermal expansion because uh, the fluid ducts are not strong enough, I guess. There was an upgraded version of the fluid ducts called the hardened fluid ducts, uh, which you can indeed make, which do have the ability to transfer lava. Uh, if we press shift here, it says contents may be any temperature, whereas if we hover over the fluid duct, it says will break if contents are extremely hot or extremely cold. And it turns out that lava is extremely hot. So uh, in that case, then what I think I will do, instead of abandoning the idea, we will just kind of detour a little bit because uh, there is, of course, another quest we can do, that being a bigger tinkerer, which is a quest to build a Tinker's Construct smeltery. Now, if we can build a Tinker's Construct smeltery, uh, what we should be able to do is combine our nickel and our iron in the smeltery to make invar and then use that invar in order to make the hardened fluid duct, which will then allow us to automate the process of creating obsidian using this crucible. So uh, what we are going to have to do here is grab some sand, some gravel, and some clay, which we do have a little bit of in this chest. However, I'm fairly certain uh, that we are going to have to make some more. Uh, thankfully, we do have all of our wooden barrels from the last episode and we do of course still have the unlimited source of water that is this thing down here again i am gonna have to block it up just a little bit to make sure that the water is not flowing and then of course all we have to do is grab our bowls wait for them to get picked up and then do something like nah, these are already full from rainwater which i guess is also fine and basically guys what i'm gonna do here real quick is i'm gonna go ahead and get just a bunch of clay and then I'm going to craft all of our clay with some of our sand and some of our gravel. Actually, maybe not that much sand. Jeez, I didn't realize we were going to get so much. Uh, but if you combine sand, gravel, and clay, uh, you can craft what is called grout. And we can then smelt that grout uh, in order to make the seared brick required in order to start making our smeltery. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to smelt that up. I'm going to craft a bit more of it after I've got some more clay. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little bit of smelting later, and we have, I believe, almost two stacks of seared brick, which should be more than enough for us to set up a basic uh, three by three or five by five uh, smeltery. So, uh, the first thing we have to do is make all of the required components, such as the smeltery controller, the smeltery drain, which is also going to require a little bit of glass. Good stuff. We can put the grout back in like that. The tank is pretty much the same recipe as the controller, but requires a piece of glass in the middle like so. Uh, we then need the drain, which looks like this. Uh, we also need a faucet, which looks like that. Uh, we also need some inventory space. So let me quickly get rid of some of that compressed gravel and compressed sand. We can then make ourselves a casting table. Uh, we also need to get a casting basin and then i think again if memory serves me correctly uh, the quest wants us to make eight blocks 
of seared brick. Now, I'm fairly certain we're going to need more than eight, but uh, just in the interest of completing the quest, which we have now done, a bigger tinkerer, uh, let's grab one of these loot chests. What are the odds of us getting another charm? Let's have a look. We got a different kind of charm. We got a tier one chance pendant. Um, I did forget the chance cubes are in the pack, but uh, we might make some of those or maybe get some of those in loot boxes later on down the line that we can then open. I'm not quite sure what some of the worst uh, results are from a chance cube. And so I'm, I don't know if there's like a nuke in this pack uh, that could just completely destroy all of our stuff in, uh, in one chance cube. Uh, nevertheless, let us throw down a, a very basic smeltery here. Again, uh, this is not going to be its permanent location, but uh, for the time being, it should be just fine. And again, I know I should be making Tinker's Construct tools, but uh, in the interest of being uh, a little quick here, I am going to go ahead and just make another uh, cobblestone hatchet. So one, two, three, and a one, two, three, so that we can get rid of a three by three area down here. We then need to fill this area up with seared bricks, which is why I mentioned before that I think we need a little bit more uh, than the eight that the quest book recommended. But thankfully, we do have an extra 60 seared bricks, and so getting more of these is easy enough. Uh, we then need to fill in the sides like so with yet more of this seared brick here. Uh, we need one more piece like that. Boom, boom, and boom. And then at the front here, we can place down our smeltery drain, which is where we pour all of the liquids out of the smeltery, as well as the smeltery tank, which is where we store all of the uh, lava, which is going to power the smeltery. And if done correctly, you'll get this little light on the front like so. Um, and now let me quickly grab a bucket here, grab one of our four buckets uh, worth of lava out of our crucible into the seared tank. And now if we want to be able to get in our ingots, we're going to first have to get an ingot cast. And to do that, I am going to have to get rid of this block throw down our casting table, put the faucet onto the smeltery drain so we can pour the liquids out. Uh, and then we need to put in either uh, one ingot worth of aluminium brass or uh, two ingots worth of gold. Now, although the aluminium brass is a little bit cheaper, uh, requiring copper and aluminium, uh, the gold is super easy. And with the gold or chunk, unlike in the furnace over here where you get one ingot per chunk in the smeltery it doubles the chunk and so if i press u on here and go over to the smeltery tab you'll see that we get 288 millibuckets worth of gold for one gold or chunk uh, 144 millibuckets is equal to one ingot worth of liquid i'm not quite sure why they chose 144 to be the number it's a bit of an odd number but nevertheless uh, if we put down a seared brick and then pull uh, the molten gold out over it that should form into an ingot cast which we can then use uh, to form ingots of invar once we combine an invar chunk with two iron chunks so we'll take eight of you uh, we could put in one uh, chunk of nickel and then one chunk of iron and that would get us a little bit of invar but um in the interest of not leaving stuff in the smeltery if we put in two chunks of iron and one chunk of nickel that should get us four iron ingots and two nickel ingots which should then turn into six ingots worth of invar uh, we only need two for the time being but uh, the more the merrier and whilst we wait for that to do its thing uh, let us go ahead and put down this where we want it to go so i'm thinking that i probably uh, want this to be be somewhat level so let me put this down like right here so we can have our fluid duct in the middle uh, pulling all the lava from the crucible into the stone barrel uh, we then want to have water above the stone barrel so that all of the lava can i get up here so that all of the lava is automatically uh, turned into water and then preferably after that i would like all of our obsidian to go from the stone barrel down and into either a chest or a storage drawer uh, so let me go and quickly grab uh, a bucket worth of water out of here we can then throw that down in like so. There we go. Make sure not to put it into the stone barrel because that is not where we want it to be. Uh, also, a quick tip, we should probably cover up the top of this like that. It looks a little bit ridiculous, but it does stop rainwater from getting into the stone barrel, which uh, can kind of block up the whole system because if there's water in here, then the lava can't get in. If the lava can't get in, then none of the obsidian is made. Uh, now we can get rid of this and quickly craft up another hopper. And once we got that, uh, I believe I do have a spare storage drawer. I do indeed, so I might as well use that. And what we should be able to do is just throw down our storage drawer right about here put down the hopper right about there and once we get the fluid hook down we should start to see obsidian appearing over here in our basic storage drawer so uh, we do have six ingots worth of molten invar again we only need two of these so let's go ahead and pull out our first one it does take a few seconds uh, to cool down once it's in the cast but overall it's still pretty fast and once we have both of these we can come on back over 
craft them both again with some lead to get six opaque hardened fluid ducts, which uh, we can then throw down over here. Now, by default, these fluid ducts do not pull out of adjacent inventory. So like the, uh, the tank here, what we have to do is craft up a server and then tell the fluid duct which end to pull from and which end to send the fluid to. Now, to make this, it's a fairly simple recipe. It's two iron ingots, one redstone dust, two tin nuggets, and then one piece of glass. Again, we can make that super easily and super quickly over in our diamond furnace so long as we actually have some sand in our inventory uh, so we'll do that grab this guy uh, we could put the tin into the smeltery which again would double it but uh, we don't have all that much in the way of lava right now and so for the time being i'm just gonna go ahead and craft up one tin chunk throw that into our diamond furnace uh, again it has been a bit inefficient but at the same time uh, it is significantly faster and significantly less lava dependent we can then craft our tin nuggets and i'm fairly certain that we should then have everything it takes to make two servos nice we can throw down one of these on the left hand side here the side connecting to the crucible we then want to right click on it and we want to set the redstone control here to ignore that means that if there is no redstone signal it will pull as much lava as it can out of this inventory and send it over to this inventory and you can see already we had four buckets worth of lava in our crucible all four buckets have been very quickly sent over to the stone barrel with the water on top that then turns it instantly into obsidian that obsidian then gets pulled out set across and you can see in our storage drawer we now have four pieces of obsidian pretty cool stuff uh, so we do still have to wait for the other four to complete here but whilst we're doing that we can go back over again uh, to our storage draw quest over here uh, which wants us to make the compacting draw the draw controller and the controller slave so uh, first things first, I will make the compacting draw because this is going to be one of the most useful draws uh, that we make in today's episode. So let's grab a bunch of wood, craft it all into planks. Uh, we can then grab some cobblestone so that we can make our two pistons like so. Uh, eventually we're going to want to have quite a few of these compacting drawers uh, but for the time being we'll just go ahead and make the one uh, we are missing a storage drawer which is fine again those are super easy to make it is just a chest and six planks around it like so and uh, we're going to throw that in the middle and then all we are missing is a little bit of stone which we should still have i think in our inventory over oh, well, one piece of stone shy that is fine uh, let's just smelt up some more stone in here i love the diamond furnace i'm so glad that we got this early in the game it's made smelting so much quicker and it saved us so much time from just not having to wait constantly uh, for the normal vanilla furnace to smell everything up um, and that gets us a compacting draw so essentially what this does for now i'll place it down like right um, I'll place it down like here just to show you what it does uh, and then we'll find a better place for it uh, at some point soon. I'm going to have to expand out this platform because it's a complete mess. Uh, but basically, uh, you can put in something like iron here and what it does is it gives you the option of pulling the iron out in ingot mode as well as pulling it out in block mode. Um, so right now, if we press shift, how much iron do we put in here? We put in 18 iron. And so instead of pulling out iron in ingot form, what I can do is I can pull it out as two blocks, which is pretty cool. Normally, it does give you the option of pulling out in nuggets as well. I'm not quite sure why it doesn't have that uh, in Project Horizon Light, but uh, it's fine because that's not really what I made it for. The reason why I made it is because if we come over to our drops chest here, what we can do is, for example, take all of these iron or pieces and we put those into the bottom slot here. Uh, it can then actually craft those automatically into the iron or chunks. Now, the reason that this is useful is once we've got our sifting system here automated, we can have all of the drops get sent over to our chest and then we can have all of the drops from there pulled out into a bunch of compacting drawers, um, one for each different kind of chunk. And then from there, we can craft item ducts. And using the server here, uh, if I show you on our fluid duct, you can actually change it to whitelist mode. And what that allows you to do is specify which items are, in this case, which fluids the server pulls out. And so what we can do is we can then have a bunch of servers that pull all of the chunks out and send them over to something like the smeltery to then be automatically melted down, pulled out, in ingot form and it makes it really easy to automate the production of ingots without having to make something like an auto crafter or a compactor or anything like that that automatically crafts the two by two crafting recipe uh, that we've been doing up until now uh, manually like this which is pretty cool. But we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because, of course, uh, we don't actually have uh, the mechanical user yet, and so there's no real point automating this stuff until we've automated uh, this stuff over here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this up, and for now, uh, just throw it on down into this chest over here and move on to the slave. Now, in order to make uh, the slave here, 
Uh, we need five stone, two redstone comparators, uh, which is stone nether quads and a redstone torch. Now, to make nether quads, I think we might have to sift some soul sand, maybe? Uh, we do indeed. We need to sift soul sand with a flint stiffened mesh. And now to get soul sand, we need witch water and one block of sand. So I think I'm going to hold off on completing this quest just yet. And instead, I'm going to refocus back on trying to make uh, that mechanical user. Uh, but real quickly here, do we have 10 obsidian? We do not. All right, that's fine. So uh, if we check here, uh, the mechanical user requires one dropper, which is super easy. It's just seven cobblestone and one redstone. It also requires one lever, which again, super easy stuff. But it does also require this resonating redstone crystal. And this is where things get a little bit tricky because to make this, we need five redstone alloys, which can only be made in the alloy smelter. Uh, it does show the smeltery here, uh, but I'm fairly certain you can't actually make it in the smeltery. Yeah, you have to have the ingot or the block of the ingots, which of course requires the ingots uh, to make it. Uh, so what we have to do here is make the alloy smelter from Ender.io and smelt together some silicon and uh, some redstone. Silicon can be gotten in a sand mill, which is another machine from Ender.io by processing some sand. I believe you can use normal sand. I don't think you have to use compressed sand. Um, so once we have that and some redstone, we can smelt those both together in the alloy smelter to get that redstone alloy that we need in order to make the resonating redstone crystal. So backing things up a little bit, what do we need in order to make an alloy smelter? To make an alloy smelter, we need four iron ingots, three vanilla furnaces, one cauldron, which is just seven iron, as well as one machine chassis. The machine chassis requires yet more iron in the form of iron bars and iron ingots. And then finally, one basic capacitor, which is two redstone, four golden nuggets, and one copper ingot. So all in all, Fairly easy stuff. So um, what I am going to do real quick, guys, is I'm going to go away. I'm going to smelt up a bunch of gold and also a bunch of copper, although we don't actually have that much uh, in the way of copper here. Did I put a bunch in my furnace? I don't think I did. We got some iron ore chunks in there, which is fine. But uh, I'm going to go away real quick. I'm going to smelt up um, probably quite a bit more iron uh, so we can make all of the machine frames and the iron bars and all that kind of stuff. Uh, get some copper, get some gold. We've already got some redstone. Um, and I'll be back in a second once I've got all the stuff required to make our alloy smelter and our sag mill. And not too long later, now that we've got some more iron, gold, and copper, we should be able uh, to make, I think, pretty much everything here. So iron bars, cauldron. Uh, once we have the cauldron, we do, of course, need to make the capacitor, which requires those golden nuggets. Uh, might as well just do it right here because it takes too much time to shift right-click the recipe in, like so. Uh, we're going to need two of these because we also need one for the sag mill. Um, and then once we've done that, we can put that in the middle. Iron around, I think, the outside. So here, 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 and then here, and then iron bars on the inside like so, and apparently I've done this wrong. It is inverted with iron bars on the outside and iron ingots on the inside. Craft up two of those, and then to finish off the alloy smelter here, all we need is enough cobblestone to make three furnaces. A stack is more than enough, so we'll go ahead and do something like this. One, two, three, and kaboom. Look at that, we got ourselves an alloy smelter. Nice. We also need to get a sag mill, uh, which is thankfully fairly easy to make. It is three flint, four iron, one machine chassis, which we already have, and a piston, which we accidentally made earlier and we have stored over in here. And of course, we can go ahead and craft up flint really easily with three gravel like so. And so making the sag mill is super easy. Now, both of these machines do require some form of power. And without spending another hour on setting up a decent power generation system, um, I think what I'm going to do is just set up um, a basic generator. Um, I'll probably go with the Sterling generator from Ender.io. It's not great. Uh, it doesn't produce a lot of redstone flux, but it does produce some redstone flux and therefore will allow us to actually get these machines up and running, even if they are incredibly slow. So to make this, we need five stone, uh, two basic gears, which are made with sticks and stone, as well as a piston and a furnace. So again, we'll just go ahead and do something like this. Once we've done that, we can then grab some wood to make those sticks. Take those sticks, craft up two of these basic gears, and apparently the gear wanted to put applesauce in the middle as well. Not quite sure why it does that occasionally. It puts in things that you didn't want it to put in in the crafting recipe, but it feels like putting in anywhere for some reason. Um, but that's fine. We can always just go ahead and take it out. And once we've got some more wood, we can go ahead and craft our piston. And finally, the sterling generator. Uh, oh, we need stone bricks, not just stone, I see. Uh, thankfully, we did smell up quite a bit of stone earlier, I think. Yeah, we got 51 over here. And so making our stone bricks is super simple, like so. And then boom, boom, and boom, we get ourselves a sterling generator, which essentially just turns fuel into redstone flux. So let's grab some planks. Let's throw this down between our sag mill and our alloy smelter, like so. 
We'll put in some fuel and it's going to produce 30 redstone flux per tick, which is not a whole lot, especially because I think both of these machines consume nearly 100 redstone flux per tick just to function normally. Uh, the alloy smelter requires 80 and the sag mill requires 70. Uh, so now that we have that, let's grab uh, a couple of blocks of compressed sand, put that into the sag mill. Again, I'm fairly certain you can use normal sand, but if we put that in there, uh, I believe we have a 50% chance. Wow, we got nine silicon. That's crazy. Do we get nine again? I think it is chance based, and so I don't think we're guaranteed to get nine every time. Yeah, there's a 50% chance to get the silicon. We didn't get the nine that time, uh, but that's fine. Uh, so now we've got our silicon. We can put that into here with our redstone, and that should slowly but surely smelt on up into some redstone ingots. We only need four of these, and so I will take out a little bit of silicon here, mostly to make sure that we don't use up too much redstone. Um, I'll also take the compressed sand out of the sag mill uh, to make sure that, that doesn't use up uh, any more redstone flux than it has to. And now we just have to wait. Again, it's going to be really slow because the sterling generator doesn't produce anywhere near enough redstone flux per tick in order to keep up with the alloy smelter. But um, any minute now, once this is actually done, uh, we should have our four redstone alloys ready uh, to go ahead and make that mechanical user. Whilst we're waiting for that, uh, we do now have 10 pieces of obsidian, and so we have completed the To the Nether quest. Uh, we've actually completed quite a lot of quests here, so let me quickly uh, check out the quest book and see what we can claim. So To the Nether is completed. Let me grab the middle loot chest there. And then if we go over to, I think, Endist Revolution, uh, we've completed... We didn't complete this quest because we didn't make four basic capacitors. But I think we did complete this quest, this quest, and this quest. So let me quickly uh, see if we can't craft up um, a couple more basic capacitors here. Because I think if we can complete that quest, we will just kind of by default unlock all of the other quests and have those automatically complete for us as well. So uh, let's take some redstone, do something like this and this. And if we get four of these at once, that should complete that quest for us it does we'll take the middle loot chest there and then that allows us to take this quest which we have also done claim reward this one up here for completing the sterling generator claim reward this one for the sag mill claim reward the silicon claim reward wow we did a lot of quests without even knowing it and then the alloy smelter as well claim reward nice so we've now got way too many loot chests let me get rid of uh, some of the stuff in my inventory here try and clear out at least a little bit of space uh, so we can try and open all of these up so we got a guardian charm which i think is a duplicate i think we actually already have a guardian charm so not necessarily the greatest thing a growth crystal slow growth works in a nine by nine farm checks up to two blocks up or down so hopefully that will allow us to uh to start growing things faster awaken draconian block that is incredible and i think that's incredible because if we check out our quest book again i'm fairly certain that Back on the main page, there is a quest called Faster Crucible Processing, and this is just a checkbox quest. It's not really a quest at all, really. It's just an information page that lets you know that Eulorian blocks give you a multiplier of 20 times for the lava production, uh, Plutonium give you 40, Ludicry give you 60, uh, Superheating Element give you 120, and then Awakened Draconian blocks give you 480 times the speed of lava production. That is ridiculous. And so if we get rid of our lava here, actually, I'll put it back down real quick. Uh, if we look at the top here you can see that it says rate three times so right now it's smelting cobblestone at three times the standard rate if we get rid of this and we put down uh, the torch that we had earlier it will go back to one time so it's doing it pretty much as slow as it can right one times now if we take our new awakened draconian block which is normally ridiculously hard to make and we put it down underneath our crucible it does it at 480 times the speed that is actually incredible. We can't put the cobblestone in fast enough for it to do it. If I take this and just start right-clicking onto the um, the crucible here, I'll put in one, two, three, four. You'll see that almost instantly, it just takes all of that and sends it over here. Look, we've got 12 more obsidian just almost straight away because it's so much faster than it was before. That is actually incredible. It's going to help us so much in the early game for producing lava and probably for making power as well because now we can use lava to make power without having to set up like 100 crucibles, which is actually fantastic all right so we've got all of the alloys here now if we go back over to the mechanical user you'll notice that there is still one more piece of the puzzle that we do not yet have and that is the ender shard and to make that we need one ender pearl and one glass cutter which is really easy to make it's three iron ingots and one stick so the only thing we're missing uh, the only thing standing between us and the mechanical user is one ender pearl now uh, we could hope and pray that we get one in one of these four loot chests. I'm going to assume that we won. Uh, we got a blaze charm. We got more stone and wood. We got a ring or experience. And we got 
32 Mystical Fertilizer instantly grows a crop. Really useful uh, for when we move on into Mystical Agriculture, which is basically uh, magical crops for Minecraft 1.10 if you're familiar with that mod from previous Minecraft versions. We didn't get an Ender Pearl, and so guys, what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna set up a really simple, really bad mob spawner um, that is a little far away, uh, so the mobs will actually spawn. A really simple, really bad mob spawner in air quotes. It's not really gonna be a spawner, it's just gonna be a dark box that's big enough for Enderman to spawn in, so basically it's a three tall box. Um, so I'm gonna go away, guys, I'm gonna build that, and I'll be back in a second. And now we just wait. I've set up a box. If we press F7 here, it'll show us that uh, the red X's inside of the box mean that it is dark enough in there for mobs to spawn. Uh, all we have to do now is get far enough away, which I know we are because we've got actual mobs spawning back at our base, which is not great because I don't know uh, if we have uh, mob griefing off. I hope to gosh that we do, uh, but I actually don't know if we do. So let me quickly uh, come back over here. Hopefully this creeper will forget about me real quick. Let me get like a crafting table, and then just make a very, very quick makeshift sword here. You know what? I'm going to go as far as to make an iron one, because I want to get this. I really don't want him blowing up my smeltery, or, or especially my machine. So, yeah, and I definitely don't want him blowing up that awakened draconium. I don't mind if he blows up a little bit of the bridge, but that's about it. Come on. Come on. Get. Ooh. Nope, no, Ooh, okay, we're fine. All right, so guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go away. I'm going to basically check on this mob spawner every so often. I thought I could kill this guy, apparently not. Uh, I'm going to go away. I'm going to check on this mob spawner every so often and basically just wait. Oh, maybe we just lag? Because that spirit did just die next to me, which is fine. We also got a rare loot bag. Let's have a quick check here. We got an active rail, pumpkin seeds, and a carbon horse armor. Uh, this is also one extra bonus of setting up an actual mob farm, which this is not. Uh, we get loot bags, which we can then use uh, to get a bunch of extra cool stuff. But uh, as I was saying, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to wait until an enderman spawns in this cube, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little while later, I've killed a couple of mobs. I haven't killed any Enderman yet, but um, I did get a couple of loot bags. And whilst I was... Oh, gosh, blizzards. Uh, I was going to wait until... I came back after killing an Enderman, oh gosh, before opening up the loot bags, I took a quick sneak peek inside one of the ones that I have in my inventory, and as luck would have it, we actually have an Ender Pearl in one of them. Look at this, we've got an epic loot bag and we've got a common loot bag, and inside of our epic loot bag, we have an iron pickaxe, an emerald horse armor, a bucket, a rib bone, and one solitary Ender Pearl. Fantastic. So, if we head on back over here, I think we should now have everything we need in order to set all of this up. Um, I did go ahead and make another chest here, uh, just because we were completely out of space in our original chest. And I also uh, padded out the spawner a little bit. Uh, I made it just a bit wider after a couple of close calls with a skeleton. Um, I also made it a bit taller and kind of moved the whole thing up just a little bit so that we can walk up to the spawner and then hit the mobs kind of in their feet. Whereas before, I couldn't actually hit them uh, from... Like how I'd set it up, you couldn't reach into the, the the gap there with the sword that we had. So made it a bit taller. Now it works just fine. So if we head on back over to our crafting table, we should be able to go ahead and make ourselves a glass cutter. Craft that glass cutter with our ender pearl to get eight ender shards, which is quite nice because you'll see we only need one shard for this crafting recipe. And also I'm being attacked for the fact that I didn't put down torches. Oh, no, this is not good. Okay. No, 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 no. Ooh, I would like to not die. Please. Not today. Hold on. Hold on. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Can I make this while I'm stood here? I need the I need the uh the redstone allies. I'm hoping he'll kind of just get bored and, and go away. But I have a feeling that he won't. No, he's right there. Okay. Let's give it a go. I thought I put... Oh, I did. I had torches on the top of my original spawner, but then when I made it taller and pushed everything up, I got rid of the torches and I didn't put them back down. But thankfully... Oh, I thought he was going to fall into the void. We wouldn't have to deal with him. He's not. He's just going to kind of keep popping back up over there, isn't he? And keep taking pot shots at me from a distance. Hopefully, we can just ignore him for the time being and maybe I'll be fine. Uh, that normally works with, with people who are attacking you, right? Uh, okay, let's take one redstone, craft ourselves a very quick dropper like so, and we also need a lever, like that, and then if we combine all three of those together without dying to the blizz, we should be able to craft up a mechanical user. Nice. And so now, 
The whole idea of this is we could take something like a stack of dust. We can put this down right about here. I believe, oh my goodness, let me, can I, oh no. Okay, we can, we, we can get rid of this guy. We can get rid of this guy. I don't like the slowness that he gives you. It makes it very hard to run away. Um, I also don't like how low we are on health. Ooh, we're okay, we're okay. Our hunger comes back quite quickly after the uh, the 1.9 combat update. Uh, we don't have, oh gosh. Do we have, oh, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to make a freaking bow. I never, ever use bows in Minecraft. I'm not even sure if this is the recipe. It's not. That's how much I don't use bows. Uh, is this the recipe? It is. Okay, let me try sniping this guy real quick. Because we need this guy out of our lives. Get out of here. Okay. Whew. All right. That worked, that worked quite well. Um, we should definitely go and put torches over there. But before I do that, uh, I would like to make a crescent hammer because the crescent hammer, um, and also I think any other wrench that you would like to use, uh, is going to allow us to rotate uh, the mechanical user so that it points downwards uh, towards the actual sieves, which is where we want it. So let me smelt up one piece of tin real quick. And once we've got that, let me craft that with three iron ingots like so to get a crescent hammer. And then once we've got that, we should be able uh, to simply right click on our mechanical user a few times until it points downwards. And once it points downwards, we wanna make sure that it is set to use item on block, right click, and then random slot or any slot will work. And now if we put in dust, it's gonna go ahead and use that dust. It should right click that dust onto the block beneath it, maybe. Have I done this wrong? Oh, activate block with item is where we want it to be set. And it's slow. It's really slow, but it's automatic, which is the only thing that matters because now we don't have to be here to hold down the right click button uh, to save all of our stuff. Um, and what we'll do next episode is we'll work on automating the production of sand, gravel, and dust. And we'll also work on automating uh, the picking up of all of these items as well uh, through the uh, the hoppers that I showed you at the beginning of the episode. But with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end today's episode of Project Ozone Light. There, as always, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to like. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down down below let me know what you thought of the episode subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos go out again thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time